a very happy April to you. This is the first day of April. I didn't do a video yesterday because I was so busy. I was potting, potting up little plants and little seedlings and um, um, planting a couple of trees. I keep finding trees in pots, you know. I keep finding them. Lord knows how many trees I must have potted up over the past year and a half. Over the past six months even, be more like it. And I've got more to pot. Because I can't pass a little seedling on a path without saving it. So as you can see, it is a splendid, splendid morning. The sun's actually quite warm now. I can feel it warming up the ground and warming up the stones. And of course, having all these lovely stones here creates a lovely... A lovely reflective quality. You can see it now, can't you? There's a reflective quality, not just of light, but of heat. Oh, big bee flew past me. So the ribes is continuing to flower. This will stay in flower. In total, actually, for about a month, it is definitely the very best chance the bees have of making it through those vital weeks, you know, out of hibernation and it's still cold and they need food. And, of course, it's just so beautiful to look at, to enjoy. So I'll show you um, my little potting area. These are plants that I'm potting up for my son and daughter-in-law who have got a little cottage. Now they live in Canada but they're doing up a little cottage or having it done up for them and uh, they're going to be hopefully, fingers crossed, coming for a visit this year. And that's when they intend starting their garden. So I've been potting up little plants and little trees. Now all of these, every single one of them, I've actually got from my own garden. And you can see the little trees there. I've got some hawthorn and cherry and um, field maple. And I've got some cotoneaster as well there which are not trees, but they're very big shrubs. So this is lovely for me, of course, because I love doing anything like this. I love the whole idea of growing trees. You know, trees are the most important aspect of our lives. People boast about spending money on, you know, a new home, a new kitchen, a new car, and all of those are lovely to have. But how about a few trees? And it's not just the trees that grow, it's what grows beneath them. Because when you plant a tree, you're not just planting a single plant. You're planting a possibility of many other plants. You're planting a seed bed for other plants. And look at how the garden has progressed just in a couple of days. So I was over in the tunnel yesterday. <laughs> there was a boy. <laughs> Giving it a jolly good water. Now, some people have been asking recently on comments and possibly new, you know, new subscribers or new visitors to be out in the cottage. Um, they're a bit flummoxed by 
when I say compost and compost and what's the difference? Well, compost is the gold from my compost toilet, um, which is what feeds all these beautiful plants on what was quite poor land, which of course it isn't poor land now because of all the leaf drop and all the wood drop, I say wood drop, little bits of wood from trees. Hugely important, great for building up fertility. And then this here is compost, which is all plant material, which is composted down. And you can see I've got a huge heap of it here. So that's the difference. And the difference, of course, is in the spelling. I want you to think about this now. Compost with one O and compost with two O's. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> and those are my compost bins over there. And <clears throat> someone else was asking me, uh, and again, you know, I do read all your comments. Uh, I may not respond to them or be seen to respond to them there and then, but I do read them all and I do get round to addressing them all. Someone else was asking me about the compost bins and uh, you can see there's 13 of them there and that does me um, by the time I get to the last one the first one is ready to distribute across the land someone said you drill holes in your compost bins are you not afraid of leakage going out into the woodland or going out onto the land um, poisoning the water, etc, etc. Um, all I can say is it's such a complex and interesting subject. I would advise anyone who's interested in this to get hold of the incredible book, which is, um, let me try to remember the title. Yes, The Human Manure Handbook. It's an incredible book to read. It's very funny as well, actually. So <clears throat> that's what I would advise there. And it saves me going into so much detail because there's not a short answer to any of these questions. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I've got my coffee here. And, uh, hmm. To show you the celandines. Now they're not open yet, they'll be opening in the sun and it's still quite early in the morning here. Now when I say that I'm potting up lots of little plants that are emerging here at Bealtaine, here's some examples. Hawthorn trees, there's one, two, three, four, five of them, can you see them there? Look, there's a Cotone Aster, it's come up on its own. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Um, and so on. I mean, the plants are everywhere now. And again, this is quite important, what I'm going to tell you now, because there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet about, about regeneration of the land. Okay. And the common approach was, you fence off a bit of land, you leave it, and it will regenerate. And I've got to say, <coughs> if it's anything like the land that I first clapped eyes on here at Bealton the Cottage, um, that's the worst thing you can do. Because... We have to be very honest here. We have to put our hands up and say, guilty as charged. We have collectively, in one way or another, whether it's by supporting these industries or being part of them, we have allowed the land to be so terribly abused <clears throat> through modern day farming practices, and especially meat agriculture, that the land cannot regenerate if fenced off and left 
to her own devices. She needs our help. And case in point, <clears throat> there are hundreds upon hundreds of hawthorn trees emerging here at Bealtaine Cottage. For the all the years that farming practice was carried out here, when I when I first came to this land, there wasn't one of these. There was no regeneration happening at all. And regeneration cannot happen <clears throat> where you have, number one, uh, no trees to seed, and number two, animals on the land. Can't happen, you see. So you have to take the animals off the land and then you have to start planting. And this is my 17th year. And at this point, as I said before, I could padlock that gate, leave this land, and it will continue on its beautiful, magnificent, incredible course of regeneration. Because the land is now healthy and the trees they are no longer teenage mums, they're approaching um, their, their maturehood, or beginning of maturehood, and they are seeding. And not only are they, are they seeding, they are seeding into what is a perfect growing medium. Beautiful leaf mould. Um, little woody bits it's all breaking down to create the perfect soil in which seeds can find a home and begin to grow so and I'm not speaking from anecdotal evidence that a lot of people an awful lot of people are speaking from. I am speaking purely and absolutely from the experience of 17 years of nurturing this little piece of land back into health. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I hope it's as gorgeous where you are as it is here. Happy April. A wonderful, wonderful time. And blessings to you all.